Christmas to you. It is our Christmas Sunday where we get to celebrate the birth of God coming to earth, coming to earth and living and abiding with us and in us. We're going to talk to you a little more about that. But wherever you are, thank you for participating with us today. If you need prayer, if you need to communicate with us, thank you. Please just call us. We're, we're so thrilled with those that have. Thank you for the your giving, your participation with the gathering place in this way. We appreciate it. The Lord appreciates it. This is the time now that we're going to come together. We're going to worship. We're going to just enjoy the presence of God. And so I'm going to ask you that you would just put everything aside, all the preparations that we have to do this coming week to be ready for Christmas. Let's put it aside. And let's just say, Father, we're going to give this moment to you and worship you. Father God, we thank you for this time that we can come together both in the house and, and globally through technology. And we just ask now that your Holy Spirit would speak to us today. That again, we would be different for being here, for hearing your word. And Father, we are going to celebrate joy to the world. You have come. You are here with us. We thank you for these implications. So we give ourselves in worship now. In Jesus' name, amen.
beautiful name it is Nothing can taste this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus We didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you Your love was greater 
take a minute and just just worship him just pour your adoration and your thanksgiving and your love on your king this morning Oh, come. Oh. 
Well, this is what they call Christmas Sunday. And this is where we commemorate the birth of Jesus. I'm going to be coming from a, from, from a different angle. And my focus is the backstory of the birth. The backstory of the birth. I love Christmas. It's a time when um, I can think about the past. It's very nostalgic for me. I can remember the snow in Vancouver and looking over Burke Mountain out of our living room window and, and it was just a, a, a picture postcard of snow and winter. Um, some of you might not have memories that are pleasant about Christmas and, and we're going to be able to, I believe, through God, be able to jump over that and get to the real essence of what we can celebrate. We see this, this man um, that represents Christmas, old Saint Nicholas, and he had a big beard and he dressed in red and and he had a red hat that I didn't bring. But I want you to know that that, that is kind of an accurate picture of St. Nicholas because in the early 400s in Italy, there was this saint whose name was Nicholas. And he would go around and he loved God. He loved the church. As a matter of fact, he was a bishop in the church. And he went around doing really good things. He, he would give gifts and, and, and to people that were in trouble, he would, he would help them. And he was Saint Nick. People in the village, um, they got to the point where they <laughs> believed in Saint Nicholas more than they did in God because when they were in trouble, they would ask and he would pray and, and, and God would would actually come to the rescue when he prayed. That is the story of St. Nicholas. The one that we have now has evolved into um, kind of like a kind of like a genie where you rub the genie in and all these things that we want come out. But I want to remind you that's not what Christmas is about. Um, as I said, I'm going to be talking from a bit of a different angle. The Christmas story, the nativity, the, the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, and the wise men, and, and the shepherds, and, and the angels. You remember all of that. But I want to propose to you that that is an effect, not the cause. You see, we, we look at this picture, this image, and we say, wow, that's the story of Christmas. And we can almost remove ourselves from the picture, the story, the movie of the images that I just described. But I want to propose to you that if we look at Christmas that way, remove ourselves from the picture, that we don't have a complete story of what this nativity story, Christmas, Christ Mass is all about. So I am going to start with the birth of Jesus Christ is about the reality of redemption. Well, well, yeah, yeah, redemption being that the, the, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah that would get them out of problems because they were they were really beat on, they were bullied. 
and they needed somebody to be their king. And so they were waiting for this king to come. But that's not the real, real backstory. The backstory is that in the beginning, God created man. And he created man to have relationship with him. And he created man to bear the very image of himself. He created man that man would worship him, that man would have dominion over the things of this earth, not people, but things. The Garden of Eden was a perfect place. It was perfect. But something happened. For some reason, because God gave man choice, we see Adam and Eve making the choice to make decisions that was contrary to God's instruction. The outcome of that was, in a nutshell, sin entered. They were told to leave this perfect place, the Garden of Eden. Relationship was broken, one-on-one -on -one relationship was broken with God. And sin was rampant in our blood. Say, oh, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a nice little sweet story with the shepherds. What does this have to do with the Christmas story? Well, actually, it has everything to do with the Christmas story. You see, in Romans 6, 23, it says, for the wages, for the payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we see this picture of, we go back beyond Jesus Christ's birth, and we get the clue that shows that redemption needed to happen. Well, second thing, the birth of Jesus Christ is about the reality of God coming to man. We're going to go to Isaiah uh, chapter 7, verse 14, where we see the promise throughout the Old Testament of the Messiah coming, of, of Jesus coming in. And one of those things was in chapter 7, verse 14, where it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give a sign. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will be called. Emmanuel. Hold that name. Then later on in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. This was speaking about Mary and the nativity scene. You see, so many times we, we, we look at this baby Jesus who was all human, Mary carried 
this baby in her womb. He was all human. But he was God. And I know this is something that many of us have our brains just kind of pop if we think about it. So we are more um, um, satisfied. We're, it's easy for us to see and prioritize Jesus as human. Yes, he was like us. He went through everything that we experienced but he was the son of God. Some of us get a little confused even with the title that he was the son of God. We think of a father and a son and we think of hierarchy, huh? That that a son was born out of the mother of a father, with a father. And yet, he was God. How do you fit God into Mary's tummy? I know it's really amazing. But the reality is that Back in the garden, we got to see a picture of the Godhead. We got to see God the Father. We got to see God the Holy Spirit that, that moved on the waters. We got to see the Son of God who, when we say, that man was made in the image of God, we understand because of Colossians 1.15, that Jesus was the visible representation of the invisible God. So, so whilst Jesus was all God, all, all human, he was the very essence of of the Godhead, the visible one that we can see. That's why he had to come. He had to come because of our mess, our redemption, and, and we had to be able to see and engage this one that was coming because you see the lamb of God which Jesus was was going to take away the sin which is that he was going to have to pay the price for our redemption the reality is Jesus had to come he had to die because we were lost. Again, you're going to say to me, well, what is this in respect to the nativity scene? Well, it has everything to do with it. You see, Luke 19 verse 10 says, for the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, born of Mary, human in form, human in experience, yet the very essence of God came to seek and to save the lost. So the, the nativity scene is a picture of God coming to pave the way through this little package, human package, 
but that was all God to pay the price for us so that we could live with him for him. What does that have to do with Christmas? Everything. There's, there's one other point. The birth of Jesus Christ is about the reality of Christ living in us. We're going to look at Luke chapter 1, verse 27. I, I encourage you over this week as we gear up for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, that you would read the first chapter. It will give you a clue. Read the second chapter. It will give you a clue and an experience to visualize what was going on. Here it says, the virgin's name was Mary, verse 28. An angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Wow, what a message. Then we get to the how. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. As we look at this picture and we look at Mary, we say, wow, what a privilege this young girl had. Wow, she must have been something special. There are religious traditions that, that really elevate her as someone really extraordinary. Well, I want to propose to you that Mary was chosen by God, but could Mary have been like anyone that was obedient to his word, obedient to what he said? I throw that out to you. You see, We focus on the humanity versus the deity sometimes. It's not so much about our, our humanity, but it's about who God is. God gives a picture in his word of how she, Mary, could be the carrier of the very essence of God through the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit back in Genesis, back at creation. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that John spoke about, that Jesus was going to leave to us in the future that would not only be with us and live in us. So I just wonder, I, 
I propose, without going into a whole lot of detail, that could this picture of nativity also be a picture of what God, through his Holy Spirit, can do in our lives so that we, like Mary, could also be the carriers of the very essence of who God is. If there is something to that, the implications, as I like to say, are monumental. You see, the Holy Spirit was the one that impregnated Mary. It is through the power of God's Spirit that we are impregnated with the very essence of God. Is this, could this be part of the wonderfulness of the story of Jesus? Maybe we, like Mary, have the opportunity to carry God in us. We celebrate the gifts. We celebrate the season. We can be removed from the story and celebrate the story. But is not the power of the story about the advent, the coming, because we needed redemption? The coming because we had to be able to relate to him, to, to see him, even though he was all God? Could the real story of the nativity be that this Jesus, who is God, intended like he did with Mary to live in you? And I. Therefore, our celebrating of the Advent, you know, the Advent, the, the hope, the expectation of His coming to earth. We celebrate that. We say peace on earth, goodwill towards men, and we celebrate part of that as we go around and say, Christmas time, we're going to be extra nice to people. We talk about joy. Yes, and the joy that he's come and I'm just going to, there's just a bounce this time of year inside of me and I'm just kind of happy in certain places. The snow is falling. Other places, the coconuts are coming off the, the tree. Then the other theme of Advent is love. Well, my heart just becomes more open and more considerate to other people this time of year as part of the marketing for Christmas. But if I'm honest with you, that's not really Christmas. The birth of Jesus Christ has no purpose other than Christ coming 
and living inside of us if we choose to make the choice to let him live in our lives so that he can catastrophically change our lives by the power of his spirit so that the Advent themes, the themes of hope is so in us because Jesus is in us and that we can give others a hope and an expectation. The world doesn't have it. No matter how many big signs of hope we see hung up. You mean to say that if the birth of Christ isn't actuated in our lives, this whole peace on earth thing has no relevance. They just don't have peace because there was a nativity scene 2,000 years ago. That's not going to bring peace. Peace only comes because you and me have Christ living in us. The proof that he can is because he lived in Mary and he was human, but he was God. So that was the proof to us that this God can live inside of us. It's not impossible. It's because of the Holy Spirit. So the joy, the joy that God intended to be on this earth was the joy that his people that has activated who he is in their lives just dominates the place with joy. Not human joy, the God joy. And without the God joy, there is no big joy to the world that is plastered all over the stores. It means nothing. Huh. The last theme, love. Without Christ, there is no real expression of love. It's, it's, it's a pseudo love. It's not, it's not the real, the pure thing. It can't be because it only comes from God himself. So, no matter how warm people feel on the insides as they're going around the stores shopping and, 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 and they're taking a little extra time with people and they're just being more loving, that will burn away. It is only the byproduct of those that the Holy Spirit has overtaken and that and that and the beginning of that birth has happened in you and my life that God then is living in us and the love that is from him just permeates and exudes us. That is the real love. That is the real joy. That is the real peace. That is the real hope that we see the picture of in this nativity scene. So I just want to tell you this morning, you that are in the house, Unless this has been activated. Christ in us. It's just December 25th. There may be some of you that are saying, OMG. You mean to say it's so much more? Yeah, it is. It is. This was what was really happening that makes the nativity scene make sense. If you would say, man, I'm going to be like Mary, I... 
I want the very essence of God. I want Jesus to, to live inside of me so that I can appropriately experience real hope, real peace, real joy, real love. All you have to say is, come into my life. I, I believe what you're, what you're telling me. I want it. There's some of you that know the story pretty good but you have removed yourself from the story. And it's just a, a great account. And it gives me the warm fuzzies, but, but I haven't been living like Christ is in me. I'm not making a change in this world because of, of, of the God that's in me. I want to do that. I'm going to pray for you too. You can be new today. You can be pregnant today. And I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you that is the most compelling story ever told. Father, for those that are listening, Father, those that are in the room, Father, I ask that you would let them know that it's as simple as accepting you, saying, yes, I believe. Father, would you show them, would you let them feel that, that miraculous hope and peace and joy and love as they have been inseminated. This immaculate conception has taken place in their lives. Father, for... For those that know you but have been knowing you from afar, Lord, I just ask that you would remind them that you would um, reignite them of the truth of who you are. God, we thank you for this season. We thank you that you have put it on us. to carry out the relevancy of this nativity scene. Thank you for the backside story of your birth. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas.